Hello friends, welcome to lecture series on matrix analysis with applications. So today lecture is Gram-Smith process, what Gram-Smith process is and how it is used to find an orthogonal set of vectors. Okay. So first let us understand, let us recall our definition orthogonal set. We know that if a, if a subset v1, v2 up to vn of a vector space v with inner product defined like this is called an orthogonal if inner product of v i, v j is equal to 0 when i is not equal to j. That is uh, for any two distinct vectors in this set, any two distinct vector in this set are orthogonal, I mean are perpendicular. Okay. For example, you see this set, uh, if you see this set, if you take the inner product of these two say, the set is simply you see the set is uh, minus 1, 1, 0, then 1, 1, 0, then 0, 0, 1. Okay. Suppose this is V1, this is V2, this is V3. Okay. You take the inner product of V1 and V2, the usual inner product. The usual inner product between two vectors in uh, real dimensional vector space is simply the standard uh, dot product. So, it will take a dot product of these two vectors. So, minus 1 into 1 is minus 1, 1 into 1 is 1 and 0 into 0 is 0 which is 0. Similarly, you take inner product of V2 and V3, it is simply you take 1 into 0 is 0, 1 into 0 is 0 and 0 into 1 is 0, it is, so it is 0. Similarly, inner product, inner product of V1 and V3 is also 0. You can easily verify this is minus 1 into 0 is 0, 1 into 0 is 0 and 0 into 1 is 0. So, it is also 0. So, we can say that uh, V i and V j for i is equal to 0 for i not equal to j. So, means this vector is this set of vector is I mean orthogonal. Okay. Now, if you take the inner power between these two vectors, it is minus 2 plus 4 which is 2 which is not equal to 0 that means this set is not an orthogonal set. Now, beside an orthogonal set, if it also uh, satisfy uh, that uh, norm of each vector is 1. Norm means, how we define a norm of vector? Norm is simply, if we want to define norm, then uh, norm of a vector v is uh, nothing but under root of uh, inner product of v with itself. And this is simply a length of a vector or a norm of a vector. So, if uh, we have a set of vectors say v1, v2 up to say vn, so this set is called an orthonormal set if, uh, if uh, uh, inner product of v i, v j is uh, 0 for i not equal to j and uh, inner product of v i for v i is equal to 1 for all i. Okay. Yeah, or, or we can say that inner product of v i v j is equal to uh, 0 for i not equal to j and is equal to 1 for i equal to j. And if it is hold for all i and j, then the set of vectors are called orthonormal set. So, suppose we have various examples to verify that the set of vectors and orthonormal set, suppose you have a standard basis of R n. If you have a standard basis of R n, what are standard basis of R n? We know the standard basis of R n is simply uh, 1, 0 and so on up to 0. It is 0, 1, 0 and so on up to 0 and similarly it is uh, 0, 0 and so on 0 comma 1. If you take the inner part of any two distinct vectors in this set, so it is 0. You can simply verify 1 into 0 is 0, 0 into 1 is 0. So, you can simply verify that if you take inner product of any two uh, I mean distinct vectors in this set it is 0 and the norm of this uh, any vector in this set any vector is 1. So, we can say that this set of vectors are is orthonormal set. Okay. Similarly, if you take the second example, now second example is not an orthonormal you see if you take the inner product of these two it is 1 into 1 is 1, 0 into root 2 is 0, minus 1 into 1 is minus 1 which is 0. Okay. The inner product of these two is 0. If you verify the inner product of these two, it is 1 minus 2 plus 1 again 0. If you verify the inner product of first vector and the third vector, it is 1 
and plus 0 and minus 1 again 0 that means this set of vectors is orthogonal. Now, the norm of this now the norm of this vector is under root 2 which is not 1 that means this set of vectors is orthogonal, but not orthonormal. So, how can we construct an orthonormal set uh, from an orthogonal set? You simply divide each vector by its norm. You see if you have a set of vectors like this say v 1, v 2 and so on up to v n okay? and it is uh, you know that this set is an orthogonal set. Orthogonal means that uh, inner product of any two distinct vector is 0. Okay. And now you want to construct an orthonormal set from this set. So, how you can do that? You can simply divide each vector by its norm. You see v 1 upon norm of v 1, v 2 upon norm of v 2 and v n upon norm of v n. It will be some different set from this set, but it will be an orthonormal set. Okay. So, always we can construct an uh, orthonormal set from an orthogonal set by dividing each vector with its norm. You can easily verify now you see that norm of each vector is 1 now what is the norm of the first vector if it is u 1 what is the norm of u 1 norm of u 1 is norm of v 1 upon norm of v 1 it is a scalar quantity. So, we can take it out it is 1 upon norm of v 1 norm of v 1. So, it is 1 As similarly we can verify for this vectors also and if you take any two distinct vector in this set because norm is only a scalar quantity it will take out it will comes out from the inner product and uh, this set is an orthogonal set. So, this will also be an orthogonal. Okay. Now, similarly if you take the third example where v is a space of real valued continuous functions on the interval x varying from 0 to 1 with the inner product defined like this, where f n is defined like this is under root 2 cos pi 2 pi n x and g n is this, then this set is an orthonormal set. It is very easy to show you can take uh, you can take any two you see you take uh, f i x f i x is simply under root 2 cos 2 pi i x you take g j x g j x is simply under root 2 sin 2 pi j x and if you take the inner product of f i with g j which is given by 0 to 1 uh, f i x into g j x I am taking i not equal to j here. So, it will be equal to 0 to 1 if you take these two it is 2 times cos 2 pi i x into sin 2 pi j x dx and when you take 2 times when you take simply uh, you see it is 2 of uh, sin a x into cos b x which is uh, 0 to 1 sin sin a plus b that is 2 pi will come out j plus i times x minus sin uh, a minus b 2 sin a cos b. So, it is plus and it is 2 pi and it is uh, j minus i times x whole dx. Okay. And when you take the when you take the integration it is simply minus cos of 2 pi i plus j times x upon 2 pi i plus j from 0 to 1 again it is minus cos 2 pi j minus i times x upon 2 pi j minus x j minus i 0 to 1. Okay. Now, when you take uh, x equal to 1 it is 2 multiple of 2 pi and cos multiple of 2 pi is 1 and again from the lower limit also it is 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0 here also because by the same uh, result it is 0. So, 0 minus 0 is 0. And similarly, we can verify that inner product of f i with uh, itself is 1 and similarly, inner product of g j with itself is 1. This we can easily verify uh, using the same concept. So, we can say that uh, this uh, set this set is an orthonormal set because if you take any two different vectors 
any two different uh, functions. In fact, if you take one function as 1 and you multiply with any f i, okay, I mean I want to say in the same if you take inner product of 1 with f i, this is also 0 for all i and inner product of 1 with g j is also 0 for all j. This also we can verify using the same definition of inner product. So, uh, hence we can say that uh, this set is an orthonormal set. Now, the next result is let V be an inner product space okay, and the set which is given as V1, V2 up to Vk be an orthogonal subset of V consisting of non-zero vectors. It is it is an orthonormal orthogonal uh, subset and it consists of uh, non-zero vectors. So, the first result is this set is always Li. Okay. That means a set of uh, non-zero vectors which is an orthogonal is always linearly independent. How we can show this? Very easy to show. You see we have the set V1, V2 up to Vk. It is given to us that this set is uh, orthogonal. Orthogonal means inner product of V i with uh, V j is uh, 0 for all i not equal to j. Now, uh, in order to show that this set is and we also know that uh, V i is not equal to 0 for all i because it consists of uh, non-zero vectors. Now, in order to show that this set is linearly independent, take a linear combination of these vectors, put it equal to 0 and try to show that each scalars are 0. Okay. So, take a linear combination of these vectors okay, and put it equal to 0. Now, we have to show that each alpha is 0 in order to show that this set is linearly independent. Now, uh, now say this vector is v, the linear combination of these vectors say the, the linear combination of these vector is v which is of course, equal to 0. Now, you take the inner you take the inner product of this v with say uh, any any v any v i okay or what you can do you take the inner product of this vector v with any v i inner product of alpha 1 v 1 plus alpha 2 v 2 and so on up to alpha k v k with any say v i here also 0 with v i for any i any i from 1 to k. Okay. This i may be 1, this i may be 2 or this i may be k. Okay. Now, now this is of course, 0 inner product of 0 with any vector is always 0. Now, when you take the inner product uh, definition of inner product of on this v i, so this will be alpha 1 times inner product of v 1 with v i plus alpha 2 times inner product of v 2 with v i and so on. In between you will get some uh, alpha i also we are we are having v i v i and plus and so on alpha k will come out inner product of v k with v i and which is which is equal to 0 okay, which is equal to 0 because the right hand side is 0. Now, since uh, since since this is an orthogonal set that means for any two distinct vectors in this set the inner product is 0. So, that means this is 0, that means this is 0, that means this is 0. If i is not equal to k, it will be it will be it will uh, have some value only when this i is equal to i. Okay. So, that means it is alpha i times norm of v i square equal to 0 because all others are 0. And since v i is not 0 for all i, this means this is not equal to 0. Okay and that means alpha i equal to 0. Now, you vary alpha, you vary i, this i may be 1 that means alpha 1 equal to 0, this i may be 2 that means alpha 2 equal to 0 and uh, if you vary this i over k, so that means uh, that means alpha 1 equal to alpha 2 equal to and so on alpha k equal to 0 and this means set, uh, set is linearly independent. Or you can understand it is like this, you take you take the linear combination of this vector and suppose it is v, you first take the inner product of this vector with v 1, this will give alpha 1 equal to 0. Now, you take the inner product of this vector v with uh, v 2, this will give alpha 2 equal to 0 and similarly, you will take uh, inner product of this v with alpha k, 
this will give alpha k equal to 0 and hence we will obtain all alpha is are equal to 0 that means the set is linearly independent. Okay. The second the second point is the second uh, part of the theorem is if y belongs to span of s span means uh, some linear combination of uh, these vectors of s then y can be expressed as uh, this sum also it is also easy to show you see. Now, this y it belongs to a span of this a span of s s is what s is v 1 v 2 up to v k. If this y belongs to span of this this means there will exist some scalars such that y can be expressed as linear combination of those scalars scalars with these vectors. Okay. That means, uh, this implies that y will be equals to some beta 1 v 1 plus beta 2 v 2 and so on up to beta k v k. Because, because this y is in the span of these vectors. Okay. So, so, now we have to find out beta beta betas, okay. beta 1 beta 2 up to beta k this we have to find out. Now, if you take uh, inner product of this y which suppose uh, v p okay where p is uh, where p is any uh, value between k and 1 again p may be 1 may be 2 may be k any p then this is equal to inner product of beta 1 v 1 and so on up to beta k v k with v p now applying the definition of inner product this is beta 1 inner product of v 1 with v p plus beta 2 inner product of uh, v 2 with v p plus and so on beta p inner product of v p with v p plus and so on in uh, beta k inner product of v k with v p. And since uh, this set is an ortho no orthogonal set, so all these terms are 0, only this term left. So, this means this is equals to beta p into norm of v p square. So, uh, that means beta p is nothing but inner product of y with v p upon uh, norm of v p square. Okay. So, what is beta 1? You replace p by 1. What is beta 2? You replace p by 2 and similarly others betas. So, so what we can say about y? Now, this y can be written as summation uh, p from 1 to k uh, beta p v p. So, this can be written as p from 1 to k beta p is inner product of y with v p upon norm of v p square times v p. So, hence we obtain this. So, the same result instead of i I am having p no problem with that. Okay. Now, in this problem you see in the inner product space R 3 with the standard inner product, this set is an orthogonal set. You can easily verify you see you take the inner product of any two distinct vectors of this set you will find that it is 0. So, this set is an orthogonal set. Now, how can we how we can find its equivalent orthonormal set? This I have already discussed that uh, in order to form an orthonormal set from an orthogonal set simply divide each vector by its norm. So, what is the norm of this vector? It is under root 2, norm of this vector under root 3, norm of this vector is under root 1 plus 1 plus 4 that is under root 6. So, what is an equivalent orthonormal set of this? The equivalent orthonormal set of this is suppose h dash which is the first vector is minus 1 1 minus 1 1 0 upon under root 2, the second vector is minus 1 minus 1 1. 1 minus 1 1 upon under root 3, the third vector is minus 1 1 2 upon under root 6. So, this will be an equivalent uh, first first element is 1 1 0, okay. the first element is 1 1 0. So, uh, this is an equivalent orthonormal set. Now, again the next problem we have to express 2 1 3 as a linear combination of vectors of S. Okay. So, uh, how can we can how we can express 2 1 3 as a linear combination of elements of S. So, we can use the previous result you see in the previous result this set is an orthogonal set 
and if y belongs to span of s then this y is some uh, expression like this ok. So, so this uh, so here here you can see that this because because this is an orthogonal set and uh, it is and all vectors are linearly independent. So, this will be a basis of uh, basis of R 3 ok any any 3 linearly independent set of R 3 will be a basis of R 3. So, this is a basis of R 3 means this 2 1 3 will belongs to span of this a span of these 3 vectors v 1 v 2 and v 3 and since 2 1 3 belongs to span of these 3 vectors. So, we can use the previous result sorry we can use the previous result here and this y we can write as like this this y we can write it like this it is k from uh, uh, i from 1 to it is uh, we can write here i from 1 to 3 because these are 3 vectors inner product of 2 1 3 which is y with uh, v i's ok upon norm of v i's square into v i's. So, now you vary uh, now you vary i ok here you can see in this example v 1 is this v 2 is this v 3 is this you can simply substitute in that expression to find out uh, that to find out the expression in which 2 1 3 can be expressed as linear combination of elements of or vectors of s ok. Now, the next result is suppose w 1 w 2 up to w r form an orthogonal set of non zero vectors in v it is an orthogonal set again. And if we write uh, v which is in any vector in v and if we define v dash as this where c i is are defined like this expression ok ortho ortho no, uh, inner product of v with w 1 upon norm of w 1 is square and similarly other c i s then this v dash is always orthogonal to w j s again it is easy to show you, you see what is uh, what is v dash here you see what is v dash here v dash is uh, v minus it is sum of uh, i from 1 to uh, n it is uh, c i w i ok r ok it is up to r. So, you can take it up to r and uh, sorry it is v and what are c i's c i's are nothing but this c i's are given to us that this c i is inner product of uh, v with w i upon norm of w i square and we have to show that this uh, v dash this uh, v dash is orthogonal to w 1 w 2 up to w r any w. So, that means we have to show that uh, this uh, inner product of v dash with any w i is equal to 0 for all i this we have to prove. So, take the inner product of v dash with w i s this is inner product of what is v dash v minus uh, sum from i from 1 to r c i w i with w i ok. This is inner product of v with w i minus. Now, when you open this sum ok it will be what c 1 you see minus will come out it is inner product of c 1 w 1 plus c 2 w 2 and so on up to c r w r with w i this will remain as it is. Now, uh, since uh, this uh, w 1 w 2 up to w r is an orthogonal set that means uh, w 1 with w i is 0 if i is not equal to 1 huh. that means this will this will be having some uh, non zero value when w i with uh, inner port with w i only that means it will be having only one coefficient at c i w i with w i. You see when you apply definition of inner product in this expression w 1 inner port with w i. So, in between we are having some uh, c i w i also. So, only that expression will be here all other for all other uh, for all other i's it will be 0 ok. Now, this is uh, v comma w i is minus c i is given by this expression is given to us when you substitute it over here 
okay. and this cancels out and this is minus this is 0. So, we have shown that uh, v an inner port of v dash with w i is 0 for all i because i is an arbitrary I mean you can put it 1 or 2 or any any i. So, hence we can we have shown that uh, v, v dash is orthogonal to w i s. Now, now we are having a important uh, process to orthogonalize a given set of vectors. Suppose a set of vector v 1, v 2 up to v n is a linearly independent set okay. and you want to find out an orthonormal uh, or orthogonal anyway, anything orthogonal orthonormal set of vectors u 1, u 2 up to u n such that the span of v 1, v 2 up to v i is equal to span of u 1, u 2 up to u i for each i, i varying from 1 to n. And this is basically this uh, property or this result is called Graham Smith orthogonalization process. Okay. Now, what is the proof of this? The proof is basically we can obtain the proof using mathematical induction. So, we have to construct a set of vectors u 1, u 2 up to u n such that this set is an orthonormal set and the span of u 1, u 2 up to u i is equal to span of v 1, v 2 up to v i for each i, i is varying from 1 to n, this we have to show. So, in the mathematical induction first we take i equal to 1, okay. first we take this i equal to 1 and then we take then we assume for i uh, for uh, this this result for i uh, hold for i minus 1 and try to show that it is also true for uh, for each i for i that means we have done using mathematical induction okay now for i equal to 1 we can easily see you see if we take i equal to 1 so you can always set uh, u1 as uh, v1 upon norm of v1 you have to set uh, v1 v u1 u2 up to un such that this set is an orthonormal set and the span of uh, v1 v2 up to vi is equal to span of uh, u1 u2 up to ui for each i okay so first we are taking i equal to 1 this is the first step for i equal to 1 i i assume that u1 is like this okay of course you can easily verify that norm of u1 is 1 you can simply see the norm of this is what the norm of u1 is what? The norm of u1 is the norm of uh, v1 upon norm of v1 and norm is a scalar quantity it, it can be taken out norm of v1 and which is 1. And of course, uh, this uh, norm is well defined I mean this v1 is u1 is well defined because, because v1 is not equal to 0 because it is given to us that v 1, v 2 up to v n is an linearly independent set and if any vector is 0, it will become L d set linearly dependent set. So, that means, that means each v i is not equal to 0. So, this expression, this expression is well defined and now since v 1 equal to norm of v 1 times u 1. So, we can easily say that the span of uh, v 1 is equal to a span of u 1 because it is some scalar multiplication of u 1. So, is, since it is a scalar multiplication of u 1, so whatever span this v 1 is creating the same span will span by the uh, vector u 1. So, we have uh, we have proved this result for i equal to 1. Now, we will assume that uh, it holds for i equal to 1 say i minus 1 it holds for i, I equal to i minus 1. Now, we have to show that it also hold for i. Okay. So, basically what I assumed in the step 2 that uh, we have basically I have assumed that uh, we have constructed an orthonormal uh, set of i minus 1 vectors u 1, u 2 up to u i minus 1 such that the span of these i minus 1 v i's is equal to a span of these u uh, i's i minus 1 u i's. Now, first of all since these vectors are linearly independent. So, of course, uh, any v i s cannot be expressed as linear combination of uh, i minus 1 v i s if it is if it is not then this uh, v i will if this v i belongs to span of this this means uh, this means this set is linearly uh, dependent okay, because 
because this vi belongs to span of this that means there exists a vector vi in this set uh, such that this that vi can be expressed as linear combination of elements of this set. So, of course, this uh, vi will not belongs to span of this number 1. Now, we defined ourselves we defined wi like this you see we define wi as we define wi as vi minus inner product of vi with uh, w1 times w1 minus inner product of vi with uh, u2 with u2 and so on inner product of vi with ui minus 1 times ui minus 1 because we are considering i minus 1 set of uis. So, we have we ourselves have constructed a wi uh, satisfying this expression this we have constructed ourselves. Now, we have constructed we have set ui as uh, inner as uh, wi upon norm of wi. Okay. Now, again the norm of ui is equal to 1 for each i okay, that is easy to verify. And again this expression is well defined because w i is not equal to 0 because if w i equal to 0 that means v i is equal to linear combination of uh, u i s and linear combination of u i s u uh, i s with i minus 1 vector is same as linear combination of v i with i minus 1 vectors that means the set v 1 v 2 up to v n will become L d. So, which is not possible hence w i will not equal to 0. Okay. Now, now we can uh, now we have to show that uh, this set is uh, an orthogonal set orthonormal set basically we have to show that this u i is uh, orthogonal to any uh, any u p where p is varying from 1 to i minus 1. Okay. So, the thing is very easy to show u p or u k you can take anything where k is varying from 1 to i minus 1. Now, what is u i here? u i is u uh, i is uh, w i upon norm of w i as we have already discussed. This expression of norm of w i can be taken out by definition of uh, inner product can be taken out this w i is given by you can see here this w i is this expression we can substitute it here okay, with u k. Now, u 1 u 2 up to u i minus 1 is an orthogonal set I mean orthonormal set okay. this is by our assumption assumption of mathematical induction. Okay. So, that means if you take the inner product of v i with u k it will be remain as it is and this u k for any k between 1 to i minus 1 this will uh, this will be 0 for all u i s other than i equal to k. Okay. So, it will exist only for i equal to k and for i equal to k the inner product of u k with u k will be norm of u k square and it will be v i into u k. You see in some term you will be having some v i u k no inner port of v i with u k with u k. Now, inner port of u k with u k will be norm of u k square and this will come out. Since, it is an orthonormal set so it this norm is 1 and this will cancel out so it is 0. So, we have shown that uh, the set of uh, now i vectors u 1, u 2 up to u i s becomes an orthonormal set. We have set it like this only and also v i belongs to span of this, this also we have seen from above. So, both the sectors are linearly independent hence by induction we can say that span of this equal to span of this for all i's. So, hence we have proved Graham Smith process. Okay. So, basically what in what happens in Graham Smith process that if you having uh, any linearly independent set of vectors say u 1, u 2 up to u k then you can always find an orthonormal or orthogonal set of vectors v 1, v 2 up to v k such that span of u uh, i s u uh, i s u 1, u 2 up to u i is equal to span of v 1, v 2 up to v i for each i. This is the main concept of Gram Smith process. Now, how we can apply Gram Smith process in some pro in various problems you see. 
say u1, u2 up to uk, which is linearly independent given to you. Okay. Now, you want to construct an orthogonal set of vectors using Graham Smith process from this set of vectors. So, how we can do that? You so suppose that set of vectors is v1, v2 up to vk. Of course, the same number of elements will be there. Okay. So, we have to construct this uh, orthogonal set. If you obtain orthogonal, then orthonormal can be find out by dividing each vector by its norm. Okay. Because all vectors will be definitely non-zero vectors, because these vectors are linearly independent. Okay. So, how we can find v1? v1 you take it equal to u1, v2 will be equal to u2 minus norm of u2 with v1 upon norm of u1 square with u1. You can easily verify, you can easily verify the norm of uh, inner part of v1 with v2 will be 0, because inner part of uh, v1 with v2 is what? Is uh, u1 with uh, u2 minus inner part of u2 u1 upon norm of u1 square with u1, which is this into this inner part of u1 u2 minus this quantity is uh, I mean this quantity is a real quantity. So, it can be taken out into inner part of u1 with u1. So, this cancels out okay, this, this bar will be here. Hmm. Yeah here will be a bar because this scalar is coming from the second term. So, this is inner part of u 1 with u 2 and this will again u 1 with u 2. So, this cancels out and this is 0. So, we can easily verify that we are uh, hence we are constructing an orthogonal set of vectors. Okay. Similarly, v 3 will be similarly u 3 minus inner part of u 3 with u uh, 2 upon norm of u 2 square with u 2 minus inner part of u 3 with u 1 upon norm of u 1 square with u 1. So, if you want to construct say v p, so v p will be u p minus i varying from 1 to uh, p minus 1 inner part of u p with u i upon norm of u i square with u i. So, in this way we can construct an orthonormal orthogonal set of vectors and if further we want to find orthonormal set of vector using this, so we can divide each vector by its norm. Now, these are some results from this, if V be a finite dimensional inner port space, then it has always having a orthonormal basis, very easy to show. You see, if we have having a finite dimensional vector space, so it will be having a finite basis, okay. say it is u 1, u 2 up to u n, if it is having n, if it is a n dimensional vector space. And using Graham Smith process, we can always find an equivalent orthonormal set of vectors. So, that means there exists an orthonormal basis of a finite dimensional vector space, inner port space. The next is if uh, V is a finite dimensional inner port space, then any orthonormal set of vectors, any in V can be extended to form an orthonormal basis of V. Okay. If it is an orthonormal, uh, if it is an orthonormal set of vectors, okay. If it is an orthonormal set of vectors, okay. You see, this is an orthonormal set of vectors. So we can always extend this uh, to find an uh, basis, uh, say, to find an uh, basis of V. If uh, basis dimension of basis is m plus p. Okay. And using, uh, using Graham Smith orthogonalization process, we can always find its, uh, or its equivalent orthonormal basis using the corollary 1. Okay. So, that means the u 1, u 2 up to u m and it is u m plus 1 and so on up to u m plus p. That will be the equivalent orthonormal, ortho, uh, orthonormal basis of that, uh, that finite dimensional vector space. Okay. So, these are a few examples based on this, let us discuss the first one using the, the second one can be obtained uh, similarly. So, what basically Graham Smith process is, you see you have given a set of linearly independent vectors 
and how to find an equivalent orthogonal or orthonormal set of vectors from it such that the span of u1 u2 up to ui is equal to span of v1 v2 up to vi for each i. That means suppose suppose you are having a set of vectors say uh, say the set of vectors are v1 v2 or u1 okay u2 and so on up to uk these are linearly independent. And you want to construct an equivalent orthogonal set of vectors from this using Gram-Smith orthogonalization process. So, it suppose it is v1, v2 and so on up to vk, number of elements will be same of course. So, that is orthogonal, these orthogonal set of vectors we want to construct from this. So, how we will form it, how we will how we'll obtain this, you set v1 is equal to u1. Now, V2 can be obtained as V2 minus inner product of U2 with uh, V1 upon norm of V1 square into V1. You can easily verify, you see, in that proof also we are doing the same thing, but other way out. Okay. You see, if you find the inner product of uh, U2 with v, V2 with V1, what is this? This is inner product of U2 minus U2 uh, V1 upon norm of uh, v1 square times v1 with v1. So, this is inner product of u2 with v1 minus this is a scalar quantity will comes out by the definition of inner product and this is inner product of v1 with v1. So, this is square cancels out and this is 0. Similarly, we can verify for others also if you want to find v3 this is v uh, u3 minus inner product of u3 with uh, v2 upon norm of v2 square into v2 minus inner product of u3 with uh, v1 upon norm of v1 square with v1 it is v2. And similarly, if you want to find say any vp it is uh, up minus summation i from 1 to p minus 1 inner product of uh, up with uh, v i is norm of uh, v i is square times v i is. So, this is how we can easily find out uh, set of uh, orthogonal vectors. And once we ob obtain orthogonal set of vectors from this linear independent set using Gram Smith process. So, orthonormal set can be find out by dividing each vector with its norm. So, now let us discuss one example based on this. Okay. Be, before discussing an examples, let us discuss these two results. You see that if we, V is a finite dimensional inner port space, then V is an uh, orthonormal basis. You see, if it is a finite dimensional inner port space, that means it is having a finite dimensional basis. And using Gram Smith process, you can always find its equivalent uh, orthogonal orthonormal set, which is of course a basis because the span a span is equal a span of both the sets are equal by the Gram Smith process and set is independent also. Okay. So, by the Gram Smith process we can always find an orthonormal basis of any finite dimensional inner product space V. Now, if uh, V is a finite dimensional inner product space then any orthonormal set of vectors V u 1 u 2 up to u m can be extended to form an orthonormal basis of V. This is also very easy to show you see you are now having a set of vectors u1 u2 up to um okay this is a this is this is the ortho normal set okay now we you can always extend up uh, any set to form the basis of v finite dimensional vector space v so suppose uh, we extend it uh, up to uh, p suppose dimension of the uh, vector space V is m plus p. And now using Gram Smith process, Gram Smith orthogonalization process, you can always convert this set of vectors into its equivalent uh, orthonormal set of vectors. So, hence we have extend this orthogonal set to an orthogonal uh, basis of uh, this uh, vector space V. Okay. Now, these are some problems based on this, and the two problems can be easily obtained. Let us discuss the first problem, the second can be solved on the same lines. The definition of inner port is different, other things are same. 
you see here we are having in this example you are having the set of vectors as 1 0 1 0 the second is 1 1 1 1 the third is 0 1 2 1 this is u 1 u 2 u 3. So, v 1 is equals to u 1 by the Gram Smith process v 2 will be equals to u 2 minus inner port of u 2 with v 1 upon norm of v 1 is square times v 1 which is uh, 1 1 1 1 minus inner port of u 2 with v 1 is what is uh, 1 plus 1 2 upon norm of v 1 is square v 1 is u 1 and norm of this is 2 and v 1 is uh, u 1 which is 1 0 1 0. So, this is equals to basically 2 2 cancels out it is 0 1 0 1. Now, if you take the inner port of this with v 1, v 1 is u 1 that means 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. So, that means we are going on the right direction. Okay. How we find v 3 now? v 3 is again u 3 minus inner port of u 3 with uh, v 1 upon norm of v 1 is square times v 1 minus inner port of u 3 with v 2 upon norm of v 2 square times v 2. So, this is you see v, u 3 is 0 1 2 1 minus inner port of u 3 with v 1 u 3 with v 1 v 1 is u 1 the inner port of u 3 with u 1 is 1 into 0 is 0 0 this is 2 this is 0 that is 2 inner port of v 1 square is again 2 uh, v 1 is 1 0 1 0 minus inner port of u 3 with v 2 u 3 with v 2 v 2 is this vector. So, this is 0 this is 1 this is 0 this is 1 1 plus 1 is 2 and norm of u 2 square norm of v 2 square is again 2 and v 2 is 0 1 0 1 this 2 2 cancels out 2 2 cancels out it is 0 1 2 1 minus when you subtract these two it is 1 minus 1 1 minus 1 and if you take that you have to add these two sorry. So, it is 1 this is uh, 0 plus 1 is 1 this is 1 plus 0 is 1 this is 1. Okay. Now, you uh, subtract these two it is minus 1 it is 0 it is 1 it is 0. Now, if you take inner port of these two these two it is 0 0 0 0 yeah 0 inner port of these two is minus 1 plus 1 0 yeah. Now, this v 1 v 2 v 3 this set of vectors v 1 v 2 v 3 is an orthogonal set and if you want to find out the corresponding orthonormal set then divide each vector by its norm norm of this is 2 norm of this is 2 and norm of this is also I mean norm of this is under root 2 now this is under root 2 and norm of this is also under root 2. So, divide each vector by it, uh, norm you will get an equivalent ortho normal set of vectors. Uh, similarly, we can uh, discuss this solve this examples. So, hence we have seen this in this lecture that if we have a if you are given a set of uh, linearly independent uh, vectors how we can find it is an equivalent orthogonal or orthonormal set of vectors. Okay. So, thank you.